like catchy, mm-hmm. but not kind of what I was thinking. But all right, I'll hold reservations. But then you heard, you know, tracks like, you know, Architecture of Fortune, Namaste. You know, it was heavy. It was still metal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got that, you know, part of what you were expecting from Circus Maximus. But then they did other stuff on Nine. Game of Life is one of my mm-hmm. favorite songs they've ever done. Um, Love that one. You know, I am the one. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, even Last Goodbye, which is not really metal either, but ends the mm-hmm. album in a very, very good way. So, you, you, to your point, Nine was definitely an album that was you were hearing the real. I'm not trying to be a cover band influenced by Dream Theater Circus Maximus album, and I can dig that. What yeah. ended up happening, at least in my opinion, with Havoc, and you hit a lot of things, the nail right on the head. When I first heard the weight, you know, that's the 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 the, the, the opening guitar riff. I could play that with my Wang. I mean, it was something <laughs> that it was. It, there was no intricacy whatsoever. These are guys are incredibly talented, and yeah. you heard the way the album opens, and you hear mm-hmm. the way that the album. And then you've heard if you've heard the show before, and I know Lacey, you know where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. I am a huge, huge proponent. If I were in a metal band or any band for that matter, you better. I, I still believe in the power of an album being a story and the full album having some meaning. So you better mm-hmm. start off strong and you better end well. And mm-hmm. I simply do not understand how The Weight yeah. is the first track off of this album. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It's a boring right. track that does nothing for me. I've listened to it I don't know how many times. And despite mm-hmm. trying to like it, I just can't. Am I missing something mm-hmm. here? I don't think so. I think they started off weekly. I mean, usually the first track on an album... You expect to pull you in, be like, "Oh yeah, I'm in for the ride on this." It came off as like, "Eh, it's it's okay," you know. But what? It, and then the next songs after that kind of got worse <laughs> to me. And then after kind of the halfway point, it started picking up again. And I think some of the better gems, if you want to call it, are later in the album. But you know, I don't know if they're going to hang on to listeners, for instance, um, that far into it. I really don't know if they're going to start skipping tracks, you know, and check the whole album out anyway, or you know, give it a shot all the way through or what. But I didn't think their choices, especially up front, were maybe the wisest. Well, you know, to your point, to your point, Lacey, you know, I hear Dances with Wolves was a great movie, Mm -hmm. but I can't get past the first 45 minutes of Kevin Costner sitting in a tent and and staring out in the woods. You know, I need need something to pull me in quickly. Yeah, Yeah, it took a while, took a while. And I but, think know, for, that for somebody like me who's not a Circus Maximus fan, although I love the genre mm-hmm. and I do respect their talent, this album, I, I give them credit for trying something new, trying something different. Mm-hmm. But they strayed so far away from their sound yeah. that I think they not only lost their existing fans, mm-hmm. I think they failed to pick up any new fans. That's kind of my concern because I think uh, I have a more extended review that will be online. Um, But what I get into is if people want to know, okay, hey, who's Circus Maximus? What do they sound like? I wouldn't refer them to Havoc. No way. No way. And I can't see any progressive metal fan turning this album on and going, oh, hell yes, this is great. I don't Mm -hmm. see that at all. Mm -hmm. I think there's like one or two songs that I'm like, I like these pretty well, but that's like one or two. And they're not even – here's the thing. I, I talked to Viv about this a little bit offline. Um, mm-hmm. And you it, – it's funny because we've had no conversation about this, Lacey, whatsoever. The nope. last four tracks of the album are my favorite as well, and the album is mm-hmm. essentially split into – how many tracks are there on the album? I think nine maybe? There's yeah. nine. Okay, mm-hmm. the last Plus four the bonus track. Are, my, are my favorite ones. And Loved Ones, though, the least non-metal album – or non-metal track – title of any song i've ever heard in my life um, right <laughs> it's a great track really really yeah. good song and even though but it's not i mean let's just be if we're being honest with ourselves here because we're being honest with not only ourselves but hopefully our listeners as well it's not a metal song at all i don't care what no, anyone it's says not. it's not even close it's a great song it is but, a great song but don't but. go into it going oh man that's a great heavy metal song progressive metal at its best nope you won't hear it Mm -hmm. there same thing with remember and this is one thing i want to touch on which is related but not related and biv we talked about this a little bit offline don't underestimate the power of a good music video 
because yeah. the video for Remember is one of the better mm-hmm. – and I make fun of metal videos because <laughs> most of them are awful. Let's be honest. In an abandoned warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> if you own an abandoned warehouse and you're looking for some cash, reach out to metal bands. They will gladly yep. rent it from you to shoot music videos, okay? Um, Especially these days, yep. Yes, they'll absolutely. You know, if you have you know uh, uh, developed abandoned warehouses in Detroit, reach yep. out to the metal community. I'm sure they'll gladly, gladly take them off your hands for a couple of days at least. Right, but right. remembers a great video, really, really good. And yeah. I find myself, even though remember is a good track, but I'm I'm just gonna. This is just my thoughts. I'm curious what yours are. I find myself liking that song more. Not mm-hmm. because it's a good song or any better than any of the other tracks on the album, but mm-hmm. that song, every time I hear it, brings me back to the video, which is outstanding. Am I wrong here? I don't think you're totally wrong. I like the track pretty much as it was, but the the video really gave it a storyline. And, you know, it was kind of futuristic and forward thinking. It was, And it brought up, you know, mo- memories and emotions and those kind of things that I think added something to the song. It gave you a context. So I think the video definitely enhanced it. Yeah, I mean, the last four tracks, Loved Ones, After the Fire, Remember, and Chivalry. Chivalry's really mm-hmm. good, too. And again, mm-hmm. ends the album well, but it's still not a metal track. I mean, if you're expecting right. metal on this yeah, album, rock. folks, you're not going to get it here. And I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing if you're one of those people who's like, metal or nothing, even though the show's according to metal, I get it. You're going to be really, really disappointed and pissed off, quite frankly, if that's what you're expecting. Because don't expect mm-hmm. to get it. You're not going to get it. Um, but uh, can't wait to read the full review from you, Lacey, on LadyObscure.com because you do amazing work. And um, we're glad that you joined us on the show. Because to Biv's point, the reason why we wanted to have you on is because this was one of my – when I'm looking at doing a show, this is the um, – what is this, Biff? The fourth episode that we've done? Yes, it uh, is. <laughs> one of the reviews I looked most forward to as we were starting to put together, okay, let's do you know, a show. We're going to do album reviews. I'm like, dude, Circus Maximus has my album coming out in March. I'm just telling you right now we're reviewing that shit the day it comes out. Um, mm-hmm. And that was kind of my thought and opinion about the whole thing. And so to have that build up in my mind and then to have this be the finished product, mm-hmm. <sighs> That's all I can do yeah, is die. So what, what are your thoughts? I will if you say to it's give been it on, on my – Zero to five you know, scale, we, Lacey, what do you got? I'm sorry, a zero to five? Um, I'm giving it a three and a half. Okay. And Which what, is low for me. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I'm going to say three. That was actually okay. what my rating was. So if you went to American grade school, if it's three out of five, which would be six out of ten, uh, mm-hmm. that's a D minus, folks. I'm sorry. But that's just – Yeah, and I, I'm it. going two. Whoa! Oh. Now that's crazy town, but yeah, well, it is. But okay, keep in mind. Now I'm coming from a different perspective than you guys are. At least, at least the albums previous, I could respect it for what it was. They showed their talent. I feel like this was a complete waste of of space for them. It it's didn't. A good, it's a good point in a way, Biv, because I will say this, Lacey. Let's try to challenge ourselves with something. Let's okay. pretend we picked this album up for the first time, knowing no idea who the hell these people were. Mm-hmm. Would we rate it three out of five or three and a half out of five? I don't know if I would, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. Or or look at it know. this way. If you went out, let's say you were a big Circus Maximus fan, and it's the old days before the internet, and you went out to wherever, the local record store, Tower Records or whatever, and you, you paid 17 bucks to buy this right off the shelf because you knew you loved this band's previous works, mm-hmm. and you took it home, and you put it on, and you sat there with your lava lamps and listened to it. Would you be upset that you just spent 17 bucks on this? Yeah, I would have rather say, okay, I think I would have rather bought it in the used bookstore, CD store. Like, I'd still keep it just because, but paying 17, 18 bucks for it, mm, not so sure. Yeah, and Lacey, we also learned that Biv listens to all albums and with his lava lamps. I don't know if you caught on. <laughs> That's right. I didn't know that, but whatever works. Yeah, fluorescent lighting. I still have the the Holy Diver, you know, uh, felt poster. <laughs> That's me. Cool. 
Well, Not Lacey, really. thank you so much for joining us on uh, According to Metal. We, we really, really love what you do, and I know that you're a fan of the show, which we really appreciate as well. But for those listening to the program, want to know more about Lacey and where they can not only read your writings, but also kind of follow you on the interwebs, how can they do that? Well, of course, you can go look on LadyObscure.com, and you can read my reviews and those of my uh, teammates on the site there. Um, and you can find me on Facebook. Lacey Mucklow. Very cool. Lacey, so much, thanks so much for joining us here on According to Metal and being the residential expert of Circus Maximus and, quite frankly, just giving this podcast a little bit more class and dignity. We, we appreciate it. Well, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Lacey. That was Strength of the Mind from a band you've heard of, Biv's Best Bands, of course, that we do later on uh, on every episode of According to Metal, including this one. But you have Biv's Best Bands, and now you have Biv's favorite band, Kill Switch Engage, which we're going to review their newest album, Incarnate. Really excited about this release when it came out. Um, this is now the second album that Jesse Leach has been a part of. Of course, Jesse was the initial singer of Kill Switch. Left for a while because Howard Jones came aboard. Howard is freaking awesome. Um, in the grand scheme of things, Jesse's very good to me. Call me what you will. Say I'm a Howard Jones fanboy. I don't really care. Howard has one of the most unique, clean vocals of anybody I've ever heard in a good way. Just a truly good singer and great growled vocals. Jesse's very good as well. But this is a good album, and of course, I mean, it's it's what you can expect. We just talked about Circus Maximus, and how it's an album that's nothing like that you would expect them to put out, and many people will be disappointed. Um, and it's an album that, if you're a Circus Maximus fan, like Lacey and myself were, you go, eh. If you're not a fan, it's not going to bring you in. This is quite different. If you're a Kill Switch fan, you're going to go, hell yes. If you're not a fan of Kill Switch Engage, but you like the genre of music, you're still going to dig it. Um, if you're Biv, who this is not his cup of tea, this sound is not his cup of tea, these vocals especially um, are not his cup of tea, I don't think you're going to win any fans in that regard, but... Uh, I'll turn it over to Biv really quick because I know that uh, this is the kind of album, and I guess this will just kind of take me on a little uh, uh, side conversation here. You know, just because Biv and I are good friends and just because we love metal doesn't mean that we all like the same stuff. And I'm sure you have metalhead friends. That you're like, oh, my God, how do you like that shit? But that happens. That's part of what 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 makes uh um, you know, metal what it is, is all the different genres that you may or may not be a fan of. And that will sometimes happen on the program. And this is a great example. This is a band that uh, we both do reviews together. I, Kill Switch Engage fan, won't apologize for it. Biv, not so much, but Biv's a sport and wanted to at least give it a listen. Because there's going to be albums he's going to want me to listen throughout the uh, time in which I'm going to go, oh, God. But give it a listen, see what he thought. So Biv, without any further ado... How much did you love the Kill Switch and Gates' uh, uh, newest album? Well, let's just say I'm really looking forward to Zach Wilde's new CD coming out. <laughs> um, but <laughs> and what he means by that is Zach Wilde is not only a person I am not a fan of; he's a giant, giant rectum, possibly the biggest rectum in metal, or one of the biggest. And uh, yet I'm still going to have to listen to that shitty album and review it for you as objectively as I can. Anyway, I'm sorry, Biv. Go ahead. Well, OK. H having having said that, uh, we did Anthrax uh, on the last episode. True. And, um, you know, I, I found that I liked it. In fact, I'm still listening to it. It's it's in my it's in my playlist. It's in my rotation. Um, so, you know, uh, occasionally something will break through, you know, something I didn't expect. Um this was exactly what I expected out of Kill Switch. Um, this is I so. Mean, hold on, let me interrupt you really quick. So you listen, to Anthrax. There's a couple of tracks that are in your rotation because you like it. Of the 15 tracks on this album, how many? At least half. 
are in now your playlist, I'm guessing, correct? Uh, we're going to go with zero. Um, because as you know, um, I cannot do the screamo or barking vocals. I just can't do it. It ruins the whole... If there's five seconds of that, usually it ruins the whole track for me. And... Uh, 